welcome to video number three in our Applying to MD PhD series. Today we're going to be talking about primaries. Basically, this is part one of our primaries set of videos. So we'll be talking about filling in all aspects of the AMCAS outside of the essays, activities, and then finally the research statement essay for MD PhD programs. So for the 2020-2021 cycle, um, the, prim the MCAS application will be opening on May 4th. Um, so at that point, I think what we would recommend is to download the letter of rec forms um, and send them over to your letter of rec writers who you should have conferred with before at this point. Um, for MDPHD, some schools will request letters from all previous research experiences. But if you're in the middle of a current new research experience, you don't need a letter from them because we because ha you haven't had the time to really um, work yet or for them to have uh, impression to talk to um, in their letter. But you can definitely send one later down the line and it would make a really good update. Um, so in terms of the first few things that you should think about um, as May 4th arrives, um, I think the first thing to do is just get on AMCAS, make your account, and then start filling in all the kind of like clerical, personal information, grades, etc. that you kind of have to fill in but don't really require a lot of thought. So specifically, one of the like most kind of just like time intensive things that you'll need to do at the beginning is put in the grades for every single class you've taken at every single institution. So this doesn't just include the college that you graduated from, but it includes any institution you maybe took one or two classes at, such as dual enrollment or if you transfer from another school, etc. And you're not only going to need to put those grades in, but you're going to need to have formal transcripts sent in through AMCAS. So if you know that, for example, you did dual enrollment at some point and that transcript might be a little bit harder to get since you're no longer at that institution, start thinking early about how you can actually get those grades sent. And then once you have those official transcripts, you can just start filling in by course section, grade, et cetera. And then all of that will be manually verified once you actually submit your AMCAS calculation or uh, AMCAS application. Yeah. And alongside of that is um, just to um, also, you would have to do your GPA calculations with the science GPA, the non-science GPA. Um, there are resources like AMCAS if you have a question about which course falls under which category or goes into which GPA. So once you kind of finish all of that sort of clerical work, the next thing that people usually focus on is the activity section. So specifically, you're gonna have 15 slots to put in different activities, and these can range from anything from clinical volunteering or shadowing, to jobs that you've held, to research experiences, to even hobbies that you're really passionate about and have shown a clear commitment to um, through the years. But in particular, you're gonna see that you'll have the option to highlight three experiences, and those will be called your three most significant experiences. Um, and for those, you'll write about two paragraphs each of kind of further information, clarifying why you found those experiences so significant, what you kind of learned from them, or anything you really wanna to put to clarify your um, presence in those activities. The goal of these um, for me at least was to highlight different qualities that I might have not had the chance to elsewhere in the application, as well as be able, and that I think was best achieved through telling a story that um, you found insightful or had some relevance to you. So on my end, I, uh, since I was applying MD-PhD, the strategy I adopted was to choose a research experience, a clinical experience, and some kind of um, community outreach commitment or leadership experience because those were the qualities that I envisioned that I wanted to communicate um, to the ad committees because those were what I, would, I felt relevant to talk to about, to talk, sorry, those were what I felt were relevant to speak to because those were, those were things that I felt were going to be important in the future career I was laying out for myself. Definitely. I, I think that's a great strategy. Um, I think one question that like we commonly hear and then also that I really had is kind of on this note, like how do you figure out what your three most significant experiences are, especially if, if like your MD-PhD, does that mean research has to be an experience, um, et cetera. 
Um, one thing that I will say is that if you are going to write about another experience a bunch, like for example, somewhere else in your personal statement, um, then you can choose to highlight different experiences in your activity section. And that's like not only something you can do, but something that's even encouraged. So for example, for me, um, in my primary, um, in my like main YMD essay, I talked a lot about a clinical volunteering experience I had and then a non-clinical volunteering experience, both for which were really meaningful to me. But I chose not to highlight those two in my most significant research or my most significant activities. And I instead talked about some other extracurriculars I had been involved in at school and then another research experience I didn't talk about as much later. Um, and for me, I really liked having this separate space to kind of hit on different aspects of myself, as Kenneth said, that were really important to me, but might not come across as much on the other parts of my application that were more tailored towards specific questions. So then once uh, people wrap up the activity section or in parallel, the most, the next thing that some people choose to approach is the research statement. In essence, it's um, a, a place to articulate um, your most significant research experience and what you've gleaned from it, especially you want to communicate um, what you did, why you did it, what did you learn or take away from it, and how it has informed your future ambitions. So the first step really is to choose which research experience to talk about. I think the default um, is to, and probably is highly recommended, is to definitely talk about your longest research experience, because if that is most likely what you have uh, found that you were passionate about, what you've become committed to, and that is something that's important to convey. Another thing that I think is really nice to do in your um, research essay is really think about um, kind of like not only what you did in these research experiences, but why you did it and specifically what you learned or took away from it. Because most of the time, especially as an applicant to MD-PhD versus an actual MD-PhD student, your research experiences weren't just about actually learning to do a skill or like getting in and producing some great result, but also really understanding what it means to be a scientist. So this is a really good time to kind of highlight um, sort of the different things that you picked up along the way in your research career. Um, if, for example, you've had a transition in field, this is a great time to kind of talk about that while also kind of integrating what you've actually done in each of those fields. So this is definitely of the three essays, the one that is the most dry and the one that's the most kind of like science oriented versus like a personal narrative. But there's definitely still ways to incorporate kind of like your story and your journey in research without making this as descriptive an essay as your personal statement. Yeah, though it is supposed to be dry and communicative, um, don't forget to take agency for what you did um, in your essay. Um, when I write science, it's very often um, that I would use the we because it's a group project. It, I was only a contributor to it in some way, even though it was my project. But here it's very appropriate to say very clearly, I did this, I was motivated by this, and this led me to X, Y, and Z. So um, to show that you have ownership and responsibility and that it's the fruit of your work is really important. Definitely. And just on the point of narrative and making transitions into um, different research experiences or different research fields, um, it's totally okay um, to have switched and to talk um, between diverse research projects. Um, it's just important that in this essay that if you choose to write about them, that you have a cohesive narrative to explain the relationships between the research and why you made the jumps that you did. And that brings to the point that you don't have to talk about all your research experiences. Um, you are limited in space. I, it is more important to communicate um, the science that you did um, succinctly and the lessons you gleaned than just to give an overview of all of the labs that you've worked in. I think that's, that's really great advice. Um, if you do choose to write about multiple research experiences, like you will want to think about the best way to structure that. Um, I think the easiest off the top of my head and kind of what I did is more of a timeline, just because like that will probably allow you to more easily discuss how you progress from research experience to research experience, since you're sort of following them in time, just like you actually did um, in the years past. Um, but once again, 
you really use the time if you choose to talk about multiple research experiences to discuss kind of the links to them and like why you chose to move between labs and what you learned. So for example, for me, I ended up actually talking about three research experiences, um, which I feel like is on the high end for the number of research experiences to talk about in the research essay. But I tried to tie everything together because I talked a lot about how over the course of like my time, I hit like three different areas of bioinformatics that all became really important to me. So I think that definitely at the end of the day, try to prioritize kind of like the cohesiveness, and like enough narrative that you can sort of discuss like why you did research and how that impacts what you want to do in the future, rather than just trying to talk about like your most successful research experience or like whatever other qualities of a specific research experience you want to emphasize. Yeah. And if, for example, if you're starting a new research experience during a gap year, we don't necessarily recommend you write about what you are going to do in that research experiment for this essay. It's better to demonstrate what you have done and be able to share the takeaways that you've gleaned both on the scientific conclusion side, but also on the personal career uh, ambition side. So um, another thing that I think comes up and a question I've had and a question that other people have asked me is, should you include like papers or presentations in your research essay and sort of discuss kind of what came out of your research experience besides the actual work you did? Um, the thing is that on the secondaries and on your primaries and all these different places, you're gonna have a lot of space to talk about papers or publications or conferences you attended. So I would say that in your research essay, they really don't need to be included unless you felt there was something super fundamental. Like for example, let's say you went to a conference and it was your first conference and it inspired you to meet a new PI who you ended up working with, then include it. But if it's just something where it's kind of ends up rehashing your resume, um, it probably doesn't need to be actually in the essay. So I, I would say one to two sentences max um, is a good number to aim for in terms of focusing on the accomplishments of research versus like the actual experience of what you did. Yeah, personally, I had them in my activity section. So if there was a poster presentation attached to a particular research experience, I just added it there as part of the activity description. Great. Um, the last thing that we can kind of talk about with the research essay is sort of what the research essay should look like in context with the other two essays you'll be writing on the AMCAS. So that's going to be your Y Medicine essay and then also your Y MD PhD essay. Um, despite the fact that each of these three essays kind of has their own little flavor and own little thing of, of what they're basically trying to tell about you, you should still sort of have a cohesive narrative running throughout all of them. So I would say that no matter which essay you drafted first, I think a lot of people do draft the research essay first just because it's the one that feels like the most close to what you might be used to writing for school or scientific papers or something. Try to have an idea of what you're going to write about in your other essays too and integrate um, experiences between them so that there's some sort of central theme to all your essays. Um, you don't want your application to just look like a bunch of really disjoint parts. And that's really easy to do because like as an MD PhD application, you have like so many different like things you kind of did and it can be hard to integrate them. But definitely I think integrating them is what makes a really strong application because at the end of the day, what people want to get from your application is a very coherent sense of who you are and like what you would do so that they can really understand kind of like what you would do at their institution. Yeah, the only thing I would add is that they're looking for past behavior that predicts future behavior. So having the alignment between what you've done in the past and the goals that you're articulating for your short term and long term future, though everyone recognizes that is subject to change and a lot of NEPHs do change, it's just important that um, the ICOMs realize that you have the recognition of what the career looks like and how you are attaining foundations or, or making good decisions about how to train towards that career. Yeah, definitely, I agree with that. So um, in the videos to come, I think the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the other parts of primaries. So stay tuned for more information on both the Y Medicine essay and the Y MD PhD essay. All right, see you guys next time.